So, temptation. It's something that we have to think about when we're Christians, when we're working in a community with other Christians. We have to think about temptation, and we have to consider the wide variety of temptations, struggles that can exist from one Christian to another. Now, usually that temptation in this modern day and age is not going to be, I am so tempted to eat some food that was sacrificed to idols. You don't hear many church leaders saying, hey, you know what? Uh, my friend over there has had this issue for a long time. He can't stop eating food that was sacrificed to idols. And it keeps, you know, making him pay homage to the statue and that sort of thing. That's a problem that the majority of countries in Europe are not going to have. I, I lived in a country where people gave food tributes to statues. I lived in Japan for a little bit and sometimes in the temples there would be like little canned goods or I've seen bananas given to statues. I assume that the priests come by and they pick them up later to, to eat them. You know, um, it's good to keep people from, from being hungry. Uh, but it's not a temptation that you usually think of in this day and age. It is, however, a temptation that was happening in the Church of Corinth. So we're going to read this chapter in 1 Corinthians. It's chapter 8, going to read it all the way through, verses 1 through 13. And we're going to, we're going to have a think through this. Because even though at immediate glance there might not be the quickest applications, they're actually, this is a very, very valuable passage that I think can help a lot of churches that I think it could help us in day-to-day -day Christian living. And it could help us in the sake, just for the sake of consideration from one Christian to another, thinking about what they're dealing with and what they're struggling with. And if there is a struggle, it's worth taking seriously. But let's, let's take a look at this. Now about food sacrificed to idols. We know that we all possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. The man who thinks he knows something does not yet know as he ought to know. But the man who loves God is known by God. So then, about eating food sacrificed to idols. We know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and that there is no God but one. For even if there is so there are so called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, indeed there are many gods and many Lords, that's sar sarcasm from Paul, yet for us there is but one God, the Father from whom all things came and for whom we live, and there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. But not everyone knows this. Some people still are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat such food, they think of it as having been sacrificed to an idol. And since their consensus is weak, it is defiled. 
But food does not bring us nearer to God. We are no worse if we do not eat, and no better if we do. Be careful, however, that you exercise your freedom, that the exercise of your freedom does not become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone with a weak con consensus sees you who have this knowledge eating an idol's eating in an idol's temple, won't he be emboldened to eat what he has what, what has been set eat to eat what has been sacrificed to idols? So this weaker brother, for whom Christ died, is destroyed by your knowledge. When you sin against your brother in this way and wound their weak con consensus, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother to sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause him to fall. Now I think I think Paul is is sincere about that, but I also think that it's hyperbole. Now he knows that some people had this struggle, this this mental struggle where if they saw a Christian eating food that was culturally given to an idol, then they would think, okay, so I could I could pay homage to this statue because the Christians are doing it. So Paul is talking about the importance of testimonies and the reality that exists spiritually. He's talking about consideration for the weaker brothers and sisters. And that, that's very important. If I have some friends who are going to Alcoholics Anonymous and they are really, really trying to change their lives, then I walk in and grab a beer. I might be leading them to temptation. Or if I say, yeah, don't even worry about it, you know, I'm not really thinking about what's going on there. But if they have that concern, if they have a valid concern where they say, you know what, I'm really not going to be able to handle this, I should stop and say, let's go somewhere else. Now, I don't think this means you stop living. I don't think this means we throw ourselves aside completely and say, you know, start you know, constantly looking over our shoulder, it's like, oh, who am I going to cause to fall? Who am I going to cause to stumble? And it's definitely not to be taken in a way where someone is just getting angry. It's like, well, I don't like that fashion, so you're causing me to stumble when you come into church dressed like that. It's definitely not that. I mean, in that, in that, Later example, the person is basically saying, hey, I want to be the weaker brethren. And that's not what we want as Christians. We don't want to say, hey, you know what? I want to be the weaker one. But if there are issues that we have, then let's be mature and say, hey, I've got this issue. Let's try to, to work with this. That being said, we need to be building each other up. We need to be meeting each other where we're at. So with communication, hopefully when somebody sees me walking into a pizza hut and somebody says, don't they have beer in that pizza hut? Is Brian drinking a beer? Hopefully communication can be strong enough 
that I can explain alcohol is not something I have a problem with. I can even go into my actual diet problems where I can say sugar is something that I have problem with, have a problem with. I have diabetes that is controlled by my diet. I keep my diet under control. I don't have to worry about my diabetes. Now, that could be another kind of temptation, could be our diets. If we have a friend who is tempted to indulge and says, hey, can we not go to that restaurant because I can't good, get a good salad there, but I can get a good salad here, that should be under consideration. In issues of lust, if you have a friend that says, hey, you know what? I'm uncomfortable going to the beach. You can take her or his consideration and saying, hey, you know what, if that's an issue for you, you know, going into the beach, going to the beach, wearing a swimsuit, not a bad thing. You're, you're concerned. I'm concerned. So what can we do that you would enjoy since we, since we're going to be doing something together? I think for me, a lot of the applications are our sensitivity applications. Being sensitive to the needs of our body, to the needs of the people who are going through struggles, and to the understanding of people of the people that have knowledge. Now, a lot of times we can walk around with the knowledge that we have, and I think this is Paul's concern is that you throw away all sensitivity to what other people are going through. It's like, oh, you crazy superstitious person, you don't have to worry about that. Maybe they do. You might not have to, but maybe they do. And that's a consideration. Now, again, I'm not encouraging anyone to go crazy with this, where you're basically constantly walking around it's like, what will people think? What will people think? What will people think? I don't believe God wants that. God wants us to be confident. He wants us to, to have courage and he wants us to be social and be able to interact with people. And, you know, constantly worrying about everybody being offended is not going to help us. Paying attention to seeing the particulars of what is helping and hurting people, that could be helpful. Sensitivity can be helpful. So with that in mind, try to look out for brothers, you know, and sisters with the ways that they're, that they may be stumbling, with the difficulties that they may have with temptation, and keep looking out for the reality of what God has for us, where he says, these are things that you don't have to worry about. I'm beyond these things. But I love people. And some people might not be. So with that, everyone be considerate. And if you have any brothers or sisters who have this temptation in regards to eating food sacrificed to idols, uh, keep them in mind. God bless, and I'll see you next time. Like or subscribe, leave a comment, uh, or message me, and uh, we can chat about, about temptation. All right? Peace.